welcome to a brand new YouTube video. In this video I'm going to be showing you how I colour pick and how I am going to tackle all these lovely dapples on this horse. Now this is Danaway Flash Jack. You may have seen him on my social media so far in progress. Um, he is the fourth Welsh Cob uh, in my Welsh Cob series that I am currently working on. Um, and he's got a lovely, lovely golden coat. Um, and I thought it'd be a good idea to show you how I colour pick because previously I've worked on golden fur and I've been unsure of which colours to use so that they don't just look yellow or look orange but it actually looks golden and shiny as well. Um, so first I'm going to show you how I colour pick. Now what I do is I use a swatch sheet. So I'll get some paper, I'll look at my reference photo and I will swatch a load of colours down that I think will work well within the portrait and then I can always come back to it as reference. So what I'm going to do is just swatch down the colours that I have been using so you can see them on a swatch sheet and how I go about it. Um, and the pencils I've chosen, a lot of them are the luminance pencils. Now these pencils have such a broad range of um, like creamy um, in-between colours. So this one, for example, is the brown ochre 10% and I think you get the brown ochre 50 and then the, just the brown ochre then. Um, but they have um, lots of these percent colours which are brilliant for in-between and like um, creamy colours as well. Um, and they have lots, a big range of different um, soft golden tones and as well as being the right colour they're the right sort of consistency because I want to get a very sort of smooth blended coat on this one and I find the luminance pencils you they are very very soft and blendable so it's easy to get a nice um, smooth transition in between the colours and the shine and then I've been going over the top then with the polychromos so when I want really fine details I use the polychromos because you can get a nice sharp hard point on them whereas with the luminance you can get a sharp point but it's quite hard to get really fine details um, and if you press hard it just sort of snaps whereas with the polychromos Promos points and um, they stay sharp a lot longer. So if I show you through the colours I've been using, so this one is the brown ochre 10%. So I just swatch it down um, and what I tend to do is a few layers on this side and then sort of go out with less layers and less pressure so I can see sort of the gradient. So if I want to use a lot of the colour how it's going to look, if I just want like a subtle amount of the colour you can see on the edge. And then get my pencil and write down what that was. So that was brown ochre 10%. I'm just going to put L there so I know it was a luminance. Um, and this pencil so far I've been using as like my in between colour. Um, for my base colour, I've actually used a polychromos. Um, this is the ivory. So I've been using this as sort of my my lightest tone and my, my base layer. So I'm just going to swatch that down. You can see it's a very, very light pencil. Uh, so that was ivory. P for polychroma. Um, and then for my mid-tones, I've been using the Light Fast Light Flesh 10% pencil. I'm just going to swatch that. So you can see this is a lot brighter colour than the brown ochre. So that is sort of more my mid-tones then. So if I just write that down. Uh, already forgotten what colour that was. That was a light flesh 10%. And that was Illuminance. So I'm just going through all the colours that I have been using because they were basically the ones that I had swatched out anyway. Um, now we've got sort of more pinkyish tones um, and this is the Dark Flesh 5%. I haven't used much of this pencil um, but it's still one that I had picked out that might work within the coat. So I'll probably time lapse this now where I go through all of my colours and then I will show you them all at the end.
I've done the brown ochre underneath. I'll, um, if I just show you down here, I'll swatch down some brown ochre and try and get the colour sort of roughly to what I've done. Um, on top here and then I'll go through um, my pencils then and sort of see which one works best on top um, to get the right uh, colour of the dapples so I've tried with my Van Dyke brown and then I'll try with my um, walnut brown and I'll just sort of like swatch through and see which works best to then figure out colours. So now I'm going to zoom in a bit and we can see how I put this to use and work on some of his dapples. So here we go, now you can see his lovely coat up close and now we're going to be working our way on this area and I'm going to show you how I'm going to tackle all these dapples. You can sort of see it in the neck here, so what I've done is put down my base layers and I just went over the top with a walnut brown and so, sort of just started lightly putting it on, very lightly first and then I was going over with a little harder pressure and start building up those tones um, and getting them really subtle in the coat as well. So now we're going to move to this area. Now what I've been doing is my very, very light areas. Like I say, I was using the Polychromes Ivory. And now it's quite tricky this area because I'm going to have to figure out all these little shapes and what they are. Um, so I know this is a dark part. So what I'm going to do is my light ovary, light ovary, <laughs> light ivory. Um, I'm just going to shade around this area. And then use my mono eraser just to erase the graphite lines. We don't want them showing through. I'm just going around where that area was. Because I know that's nice and light around it. And again, erase those graphite lines. Now this bit is a little darker coming up, so I'm going to use, if I then look at my swatch sheet, so I want something a little bit darker than the ivory, um, so I think the next shade down would be the brown ochre, so I'll go in with the brown ochre pencil. Now this is the brown ochre 10%, so now I'm just going to go and shade in that little shape there. So I'm constantly looking back at my reference at the moment, making sure I'm getting it just right. It also blends in up there. And I'm going to shade it over the top of that ivory as well. Like I said, I want it all to blend in nicely with each other. I'm just going to lightly put this in that shape that I've drawn out there. And overlap it into the ivory. So I'm sort of, as I'm looking back, I'm also mapping out so I know this is that really dark section, that's a little bit in the middle, I'll make sure I put the um, reference photo up in this video for you as well so you can all see. <laughs> Takes a lot of patience um, and planning. This area also needs to be darker eventually but I want to make sure I get some of this area in first um, before I go too dark up here. I'm just going to go over my ivory and just blend that. I'm going to remove the graphite lines here and get some of that brown ochre in.
Now I want to blend these two areas together, so I'm going to look at my swatch sheet again and see which colour will blend these two nicely, and I think the dark flesh. Actually no, if I look at my reference, it's more um, of a dark brown. I think I'll go with the Van Dyke and um, overlap it over the top. And like I said, just going to slowly overlap the two areas. So I do it very, very lightly first and then with a harder pressure. There you go, and I'm just going to put more of it down here. And then further blend that in, I'll go in with my brown ochre that I've been using for the dark areas. And just softly blend that in a bit more. So it transitions nicely into the coat and it looks nice and subtle. Rather than um, too obvious and sort of harsh, I want everything to be nice and soft. There are some colours I just noticed I haven't put down yet, um, which is, I think, Nugget. I've been using to get some of the little brown, um, the darker brown areas in. So I'm just going to find my Nugget pencil. So I do find after I've swatched out um, some colours that there is extra colours then I need to put on. So I would go and I would add it to my swatch sheet um, and write down the name of a colour that I've added that I realise, oh, actually, this colour would work well as well. Um, I'm not doing it here, I know what colours I've been using. There's always, if it's new colours that I've never used before, um, I will swatch them down, but I know how a nugget looks, because um, it's a pencil that I use in the majority of my portraits anyway. Um, so I think, when I first started out with colour pencil, I'd swatch every colour so I know exactly what it looked like, but after time, like five years of using colour pencils now, I know what certain colours look like. But if I was to use some new colours that I wasn't quite familiar with, like the luminance um, colours, then I would swatch them down as more of a reference. And I would usually, um, sometimes, um, if there were certain colours that I was always using in a portrait, I'd swatch them down because I'd want a reference what colours I have been using, but then when it's like extras like a dark sepia or a nugget or um, extra sort of basic colours like that, I don't tend to swatch them because I just know how they look. I hope that makes sense. It's my weird way of working. Um, but yeah, I'm going to use this nugget now just to add in extra little bits of brown coming down just to give, um, just to tone his coat down a little and give a little indication of fur texture. Because otherwise he looks at sort of a very bright orange. And I just want to get a few neutral tones in there as well. So I think this one is going to be the one that's taken me the longest out of um, the Welsh cobs I've worked on so far. Just because he's got such an intricate coat. Um, I thought Danaway Tango was going to be pretty hard, but I think this one is going to be a lot more trickier with the amount of dapples in his coat, which are beautiful. Um, I really want to make sure I get his dapples just right because that's his sort of main feature, is his dapples. He's known for his, um, his golden coat and striking dapples. This pencil is getting tiny. I may put it in a pencil extender in a moment. It's getting a little trickier to work with. I'm just putting a subtle amount of this nugget over the top. And sort of following the pattern of his coat. Okay, now I want to get sort of a yellowy brown in. Um, I think I'm going to go in with the brown ochre. 
So this is the Pablo's brown ochre and I'm just going to put that over the top and this little darker patch is coming in and I'm going very very lightly first because it's quite a rich pencil this one um, and I only want a subtle amount of that colour so then what I'm going to do is over the top to sort of dull it down a little I suppose is go over with the uh, brown ochre 10% luminance and just go over the top and blend that in nice and softly and blend out those edges as well so they're nice and blurred and soft Now this shoulder by here is quite dark, um, but I think if we work on um, this area first, because I want to get the dapples in this video more than the shoulder, and there's a lot of dapples around here, so I think I'm going to start to come away from this part um, and work my way up. If I was working this without a video, um, I'd probably start working down here then up, but I want to make sure I film the dapples for you all. This was the intention of this video. So, I'm going to work on the withers, I think, and go in with ivory as my base. I think that's where we did start in this video, and I got carried away and worked my wig downwards. Um, so I'm just going to raise some of my graphite, and do my base of ivory, and I'm going to leave out where I sort of sketched where the dapples are going. Getting a nice smooth coverage there, and then go in with my next shade up, which is the brown ochre ten percent, and just go over a little, just to darken it a touch. And then I'm also going to use it to go around these areas. Spray some more of the graphite. And I think I'm also going to use this brown ochre as the base layer under the darker areas. So I'm just going to remove the graphite line for that one a little and shade in there. And then I'm going to go with my next shade. Um, I'm going to go in with the brown ochre, the brown ochre 50% and again go over the top. You can see I just sort of gradually darken as I go and then blend them together. And now I want to get sort of um, the brownish tones over the top, so I'm going to go in my Van Dyke. And this is what I love about the polychromos. Focus there. Is how sharp um, of a point I can get and then how long this will stay sharp for. Um, so if I was to press hard with the luminance pencil, it would probably crumble. But um, with the polychromos, you can press quite hard and you'll get a nice tiny sort of fine point on your pencil. So I'm just following now the shape of the dapples that I can see. So I can see that this one comes out a little further. So that's sort of the point. And it comes across there. 
Now, as it gets into the lighter areas, I'm going to use a lighter pressure to sort of blend it outwards. And I'm constantly looking back at my reference to make sure I'm getting the shape just right and the amount just right. And this very subtly sort of joins up there very, very lightly. And I know now that this bit needs to be a lot darker, so I'm just going to shade over the top first. And then go in with a harder pressure, just to darken it a little further. This area is quite dark. I don't want to go in with any sepias. I don't want to try and muddy it up. Um, but hopefully I can get a dark enough tone with just this Van Dyke. And then I think um, a good colour for getting like orangey tones darker is to go in with blues. Um, because blue is the opposite colour on the colour chart. Um, so it's the opposite colour of orange. So if you use them two together they sort of cancel each other out and give like a shadowed dark effect then. So I think if I want to get these dark, I might go over with um, like a cold grey or even the Payne's grey because they're very bluey um, toned pencils. And now I can see that this bit needs to be darker so I'm going to go in with my brown ochre and I'm just going to darken in the middle there. I'm going to come across here, so I'm just going to put some ivory down. And I know these little spots here um, are the lighter spots, I believe. So I'm going to put my ivory down. <laughs> and then raise the graphite and make sure I draw around them. And then go in with the brown ochre and just start darkening around them. And then I think I'm going to go in with the bistro first before I start darkening um, with the Van Dyke brown. I'm just using like tiny little fur strokes now. And then go in with the Van Dyke Brown. I think I might use a little bit of the burnt umber as well actually because I want to get um, some more orange. Actually I think the Van Dyke brown is working well over the top. We will see. So now that I've worked on the darker areas I'm going to go back in and I'm going to use uh, the brown ochre first. So it is quite um, darkish orange in these lighter spots now. So I'm going to use the brown ochre first and then look at my swatch sheet. So that was the brown ochre 10%. I think I'm going to use the brown ochre 50% on top.
just like that and then the bistra and then I start blending in so um so it's not a harsh like circle around it it's just like um it sort of like blends inwards doesn't it I'm just gonna use the bistra to blend inwards and go around And then the Van Dyke on top around again. Very small um, sort of strokes now. There you go, so there's two sort of like tiny little dapples done. And I'm just gonna blend out this area a bit more. Some more orangier tones in there. And then I'm just going to carry on doing that entire process around now. Um, so for sort of these uh, dapples. So. I'm just trying to mark out where I am at the moment, so I'm really looking at my reference. So that is that shoulder there. So this is all quite light. Um, I'm trying to work out. Actually, if we go along this area, because I don't think we're really doing much dapples on this part. So if we go along here. Now I'm trying to work out what part this is. I think that's the dark area. So I'm just going to shade around. And erase the graphite there. Going with the bistro to sort of mark out that that is a dark bit coming up. So I'm using it very slowly. Not, not slowly, I should say, very lightly. But I am going quite slow to make sure I'm getting it in just the right places. So after these two little dapples, go up here and then get some Van Dyke. I know this is going to take a while. Um, to sort of go through, so I think I'm going to time lapse this section.
Okay, so now I've sort of got into the swing of things, um, I'm going to explain exactly what I'm doing. So it was hard just now to sort of concentrate and explain what I was doing when I was trying to figure out what I was going to do in the first place anyway. So what I've been doing is shading out all the dark areas um, and sort of filling them in and then go back in and add in the light areas to sort of the dapples. So I've been using um, the uh, not the light flesh, the brown ochre ten percent um, as my base layer, and then going over with a bit of the bistra and then some burnt umber and some Van Dyke um, to do the outer parts, and then going back in with the brown ochre ten percent then um, to fill in and making sure I'm erasing the graphite as well. So then I'm filling in the little dapples then. And then just sort of using the pencils to blend those out together because it's not like um, like harsh, uh, like defined spots or anything like that. It's, it's sort of like the, the fur just sort of blends together. So I'm going around and blending it in with the Bistra first. Just like that this and then if it needs to be a touch darker I'll go in with the burnt umber and then maybe afterwards once he's finished or once I finish those sections if it needs to get a little darker I think I'm going to go in with the Payne's grey um, to further darken it. I do want to use a dark sepia so I think it'll just make it look a bit muddy um, yeah so that's how I'm doing the dapples so far which seems to be working well um, and then just blending them out the brown ochre 10% and the ivory because this section of the shoulder here is quite light so I'm making sure to leave this quite light so I'm going to work on this section so I'm going to go in with the brown ochre 10% and I'm going to go around that area where I know that is sort of a dapple and erase in the graphite so it's just working in very very tiny sections and figuring everything out and then blending them all with each other in with the, the Bistra and then just a touch of the burn dumber and when I'm using the burn dumber I'm not going all over that area I'm sort of doing like thin areas on top it's not going edge to edge but more like in the middle if that makes sense And you just want to be quite subtle with the dapples, um, so using like very light shading and make sure they blend into each other well so you, you haven't got sort of circles drawn on your horse. Um, and with his dapples as well they're sort of very defined on this area and then sort of like blend out quite subtly along and then when they get back here, um, especially in his hindquarters they, um, they get quite dark and defined. So it's a lot of um, different techniques to use along his coat. So 
because I'm just going to work on the back here now. So, same technique. I'm going around the shapes um, very carefully and then removing the graphite. And then building my layers up, so I'll go in darker. And then add in the beaster on top first to sort of get that like orangey yellow tone. I'm sort of working in little flicks if I can. Just to get a little um, bit of fur texture in. So there's a very high definition photo that I'm working from so I can actually see the texture of his coat. Unlike um, when I was working on Ebu and um, Black Harry, you could barely see any sort of detail in the coat because they were quite old photos. This one I can sort of see his fur texture in. I'm going to just work in sort of very, very subtle little flicks. And just darken a little bit with the Van Dyke, again using tiny little flicks. And then fill in the spots. They are more um, orange as we get over the further side, so I'm also going to use the burnt ochre over the top and get a nice rich orange tone in those spots. Same on these, just a touch of it. And blend it all together with the brown ochre temp scent, so it's nice and smooth. And then carry on doing what I'm doing. So I know this long section here is a nice um, yellow sort of highlight where his shine is. So I'm just using the same process over and over now. So putting my base layer down, working up through my tones. And then adding the little details and then filling in the little dots. There you go, so that's some more of the dapples in. Now I think this is going to take me a very long time and if I was to do this in real time um, I'm going to be here and do like a three hour video. So I think what I'm going to do is time lapse the rest of me doing these dapples here and I will catch you when I've finished them.
And there he is, all finished. So that is how I tackled all those dapples. And let me tell you, that was um, one of the most challenging things I've drawn, I think. Um, but what I found worked well was to go um, in lots and lots of layers and put the uh, the dapples down and then colour over the top of them. So it pushes it back into the coat and then define it over the top. And it's really made it sort of blend into the coat and look nice. And I'm really pleased with how I managed to get the shine um, on his hindquarters here because when I saw the photo um, I was a bit doubtful if I'd be able to get that shine with the dapple sort of fading into the shine but I'm really pleased with how this has come out. I hope you've all enjoyed the video. If you watched the entire thing then thank you so much because that really helps um, it helps my channel grow and get my work to be seen and I'm glad you enjoyed it enough to watch the whole thing. Um, if there are any questions, please let me know in the comments. I'm always happy to help. This is now available as prints and cards on my website and Etsy. My Etsy? My Etsy. Um, linked in the description box below, um, along with my Patreon. This isn't a tutorial on Patreon, but um, this is just an insight to what my tutorials are like. So if you liked um, my sort of teaching ways in this video, then please sign up to my Patreon. There'll be lots more tutorials to come, and there's already quite a few on there at the moment. Um, but again, thank you all for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe and give this video a like. As I say, it really helps my channel to grow and then I can produce more and more videos for everyone. So I hope you all enjoyed and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys!